what principles of escalation, de-escalation come to bear on your analysis? Well, it, in my analysis, there's two very distinct examples that if I were actually to use this scenario in training, that you have one person clearly demonstrating de-escalation and another person clearly escalating. Let's talk about the person that clearly uh, demonstrates de-escalation. Who would that be? So you've got people moving away from the situation. That's a form of de-escalation. You've got um, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ford who positions himself or appears to have pos positioned himself in a, in a location where he could possibly physically intervene if needed. I don't know if he was thinking that, but he kind of moved himself a little closer, but not too close. Um, he was hitting the emergency button numerous times. Um, he actually appeared to engage with Mr. Christian with humor, which is a form of de-escalation, slight humor, interjecting humor into an escalating situation. Um, he was smiling talking in a low voice. At one point, uh, and I believe his name um, is Mr. Fletcher, as he was moving into the situation, he tried to stop him and was saying, hey, they're just words or just words when or you something. He, you mean Mr. Ford tried to stop Mr. Fletcher? Yes, he appeared to like, try to stop him from getting too close. Okay. And it's, you know, he was basically not he was engaging with Mr. Christian, but he wasn't antagonizing him. Mr. Then in contrast, um, you identified somebody that tended to do things that seemed to escalate the situation. Right. So in this unfortunate incident, if I were to use this in a training, I would point out that what Mr. Fletcher did was very inflammatory and was basically pouring gasoline on a fire. Okay. So what did you observe Mr. Fletcher doing that leads you to draw that up? Loud shouting being very confrontational, aggressive body language, um, getting very close, uh, too close, and just basically being confrontational. So let's uh, walk through some of the events on uh, the match that day and begin with the sequence that began when uh, Mr. Nam uh sat down in the seat across from Mr. Christian. Did you observe that moment in time? I did. And what can you tell us uh, that you observed that is significant to your analysis at that point? Well, the interesting thing to me when I noticed that, you know, on, on your first glance, it might appear to be harmless. However, if you really look at it, what he did was very confrontational and, and more taunting. Well, we're talking about, who are we talking about now? Uh, Mr. Nam Kamishi, I Nam think it's Nam Kamishi. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, you know, can I demonstrate a little bit? Sure. Okay. So... When he sat down, he didn't sit in the chair and face forward. He sat in the chair at an angle facing Mr. Christian and put his phone in his face. That's far different than just sitting down and casually, subtly filming him. Okay. What's the difference that? Well, it's very confrontational. And does this have to do with the closing the gap or proximity as well? Correct. So he came to Mr. Christian. Mr. Christian did not go to him. Uh, is it significant that he came from behind Mr. Christian, or Mr. Christian probably didn't have an opportunity to even see him coming? Correct. And why is that important? Well, when somebody approaches from behind and they're suddenly in your face, even somebody that's not agitated, that could be like, whoa, what's going on here? And then um, the fact that he says some words to the effect of you're going to be an internet sensation, is that significant in terms of your analysis? So obviously by the video, Mr. Christian was already agitated. He was already having some kind of issue going on. And by doing that, all you're going to do when somebody's in that particular state is more than likely make it worse. Um, did you observe Mr. Christian's response? Yes, he slapped the phone out of his hand. How would you characterize that response? Well, at that point, the phone's a threat to him. It's something negative to him. It's something that's being used against him. So how would you characterize Mr. Christian's reaction? I would say it was a defensive reaction because that was a negative thing to him that the phone was in his face and he didn't want the phone in his face. Mr. Fletcher approached. Did you observe that? I did. What significance is that? Well, again, 
This is an individual closing the gap to Mr. Christian, not Mr. Christian closing the gap, in a very aggressive and confrontational manner. Um, and then you observed how Mr. Christian responded. Correct. What did you observe? The schoolyard standoff what is what mean? I call it. What do you mean by that? Well, basically, it's when you have two people who are in a verbal altercation and for whatever reason, ego, um, face, want to say face, they get into this argument. Bumping chests, I'm the bigger guy, but neither one of them had done anything. Uh, so did you observe Mr. Christian push Mr. Fletcher? I did. What is your analysis of that uh, situation? So on face value, a lot of people would probably look at that as a provocation. Um, Unfortunately, my analysis is different because what happens when you push somebody into a confined space, which is what he was in, back, he, he, Mr. Christian. Mr. Christian, and they kept coming towards him, your natural reaction is to push somebody away. Why is that a natural it, reaction? Because they're too close. Um, and being too close, why is that such a problem? Because they're a greater threat when they're that close, so you're trying to create distance. And then you observe Mr. Christian pushing uh, Mr. Don Kimeche. Correct. Correct. And what's your analysis of that? Same. Just get away. Stay away from me. At this point, is it significant that there are two individuals that are really getting in his face in his space as opposed to one? Correct. That would be what we call a disparity of force. And explain what you mean by that. So when you talk about self-defense, personal protection, use of force, even at the law enforcement level, you talk about the general terms, unarmed, armed. So generally, an unarmed situation, you respond to with unarmed force. Armed, you respond with armed. However, that can change. So for example, let's say I have a medical condition. I had an open heart surgery six months ago, and I am facing a younger, stronger opponent who only has his hands and feet. Well, I have a medical risk that creates that as a bigger threat than if I didn't have that. That's a disparity. So that allows me a greater latitude in the type of force I can use to defend myself. Um, during the sequence, you probably heard Mr. Christian yelling something to the effect of, do something, I'll do something, bitch, do something, repeatedly. Correct. What is significant about that in terms of your health? So that's very common verbiage that you see in these types of schoolyard standoff situations. Um, you see it at bars. You see it um, when I was working with gang kids, they would do this. Basically, it's the, I don't want to hit you, and I'm not going to hit you. You think you're really going to hit me type of thing. So do you characterize it as a <coughs> warning or a threat? Um, how would you characterize it? Just talk. So returning then to the moment where Mr. Fletcher grabs Mr. Christian, what's your analysis of that? Well, he's already been presented with two people, so that's a disparity, two on one, right? And now he's being thrown down by somebody that's been very aggressive with him, smaller than him, but still yet throwing him down. He gets up, and he gets thrown down again. And so... What is, what is happening at that moment in terms of your analysis for escalation, de-escalation, use of force? Well, so now Mr. Fletcher has become the aggressor. Why do you say that? Because he threw Mr. Christian to the ground, twice. Uh, and what significance do you attribute to the fact that there's not just one individual, but actually two that have already engaged in the encounter, and then there's a third individual there as well? Correct. So. You know, it could be reasonable that Mr. Christian perceived, now I have two attackers, and I'm being attacked, but there's two of them. i got to defend myself. I can't say that's what he was thinking, because I'm not Mr. Christian, but that could be reasonable based on the video. Mr. Christian, then, you observed, defended himself with the knife. Correct. Um, is there a principle of self-defense that determines whether a person is allowed to do such, uh, make such a defense? So again, this comes back to disparity. If there's three on one or two on one 
or there's this, you know, any other type of disparity, you have a greater latitude in what you can do to defend yourself. And greater latitude consists of what again? Excuse me? What does greater latitude mean for us? Meaning you have different options that you wouldn't have if those disparities didn't exist.